So let's say you, you're done and you want your guy, okay, to, uh, you, you want to change scenes. Maybe you want to do a close-up on his face or something like that, okay? Moving to a new scene is actually really simple, but it has a couple complications that you might want to be uh, uh, you know, aware of. So number one, to make a new scene, pretty simple. You go over here to the Scene tab. If this Scene tab isn't showing up, make sure you're on Animator, or you can go to the window and you can find the Scene tab and you can select it and it will start, it'll pop up. You can also tear these little tabs out, okay, and drag them anywhere you want. Um, so you can start to customize your workspace if you want to. Whatever, that doesn't really matter. In fact, one of the things that I do with Animator is I almost always take the Libraries tab uh, and the CC Libraries tab and I will put them in with the properties because once we start getting more and more symbols in here, this list of symbols can get really, really, really long. And so it's nice to be able to have uh, a little bit more space and then you can click on it and then the preview shows up there and everything and you just have a lot more space for your library. And then you just got to click back and forth and that's a little more work but it's not a big deal. Anyway, so your scene tab should be here and you're going to click the new scene button. Done. Now you can also, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can also duplicate a scene and that will come in with all of its animations and everything. Um, and, and that's a good way of starting too, but if it's going to look exactly the same, why are you moving to a new scene? You should just extend the animation out. So in this case, I'll just start with a new scene. Now, one of the things that I can do when I'm doing that is I can actually go to my library and let's say I want my runner again, okay? I can just bring him in and start with the exact same symbol that I had before. Right click, insert frame, now that extends. And then you know what I'm gonna do is maybe what I wanna do is I wanna go to a close up of him running. And so I can scale him up here like this, move it down, okay, maybe a little bit off center like this. And now, if I test the movie, watch what I get. You see, so it's like I've switched to a new camera. And the cool thing is, I did very little work because I'm using the symbol that I built. And this is another reason to encapsulate animations inside symbols is you can reuse the symbol however you want. Now, there's a major problem with this and that is that symbols exist outside of um, or in spite of the scenes that they're in. So if I didn't like this uh, symbol for my second scene and I go in and alter it, guess what's going to happen in scene one? It's going to alter it in scene one as well. Let me show you by doing something a little dramatic, and that is I'm just going to add a big green splotch. So if I'm in scene three, it's, I don't know why it says scene three. You can rename them by the... Oh, that's right, because I deleted one. Um, you can rename them by double-clicking, and you can, you can name them anything you want, close up, on a runner. And then it will play in order that the scenes are from top to bottom. So the names don't matter. So I always try and make them more descriptive myself. Um, runner left to right. So I know exactly what's going on in the scene. And if I take this scene and drag it up here like this and flip the organization or the order, then they'll cha it'll change the order in the way that it plays them. But let's say I don't like this. Um, and I wanted, uh, and I, let's say I made the mistake of saying it wanted to, to be a different person. And so I'm going to make a new layer here. And um, actually that won't work, but I'm just going to create a big nasty circle. So here we, uh, let's, let's make it like green and there's a circle. Okay. It doesn't even stay with his face, but that's okay. So now I've got this circle, and I might think, okay, cool, I made a green circle, and it will only show up on scene two? No, it shows up on both scenes because the symbol is the same symbol in both scenes, you see? So that ugly green circle now shows up in both. I don't know why you'd want to make a green circle like that. I'm just doing this as illustrative purposes. So now, if I really wanted to do something like that where I make a change that only works on 
one scene, what I have to do, and it's really simple, is I actually have to create a duplicate. So if I go over here, I'll double click on this original runner uh, symbol, and I'll call it runner scene one, or I'll call it uh, runner left to right. Okay, And then I'm going to duplicate that, and I'll call it runner close up. So now I've got two different symbols, but if you look over here at the use count, okay, you'll see that left to right is used twice, but runner is used no times, it's zero. So in order to get it to be used, I select this, and I can actually swap the symbols out for each other, which is really nice. So I'm going to, um, oh wait, it's not here, it's not on a right click. You click on it, you go to the properties tray, that's it, and right here it says it's an instance of, and it tells you what symbol it is. So I click swap, and then I'm just going to choose my close-up symbol instead. And now, if I go back to my library, you can see that the, the instances are one and one. So now if I go into this symbol, and I make a new layer, and I make an ugly green circle, and then I test the whole animation, you'll see that the green circle is not on the first scene, but is in the second scene. Okay, so that's really an important thing. Sometimes you want the same symbol in both scenes, and sometimes you don't want the symbol in both scenes. And so, and a lot of it will just depend based on whether or not you want uh, them to be identical or not. If you're going to change any part of the symbol, you must create a duplicate so that you have a specific symbol for each scene. Okay, so that you just so that you have uh, uh, you know you're not so that you're not affecting the original scene. Does does this make sense to everybody? I mean, it's it's pretty. Um, I think it's pretty common sense, but the problem is kind of remembering this when you're going through the animation. So many times, I'll do this demo or a demo or a demo similar to it, and students will be like, "Yeah, I got it," and I can tell they're bored, and I can tell that they're like, "Yeah, this is easy, Voicebird, I got this." But then. Not like a week later, my animation's ruined, I can't believe it, because they had three scenes, and all three scenes had the same symbol. And then in scene number four, they started a fourth scene, they wanted to change the symbol, and so they changed it, they saved it, and then the next day, they go back and they test it, and all of a sudden they realize now that, that all three scenes previous are ruined, because they weren't being careful about their, their symbols, okay? So, that's really important to kind of keep all that in mind. It's really important to kind of pay attention to what you're doing and to think. Every time you start, if you go into a symbol to alter it, stop right away before you even do that. Check your library and check the usage count. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And if that has more than a one there, if it has a two or a three or a four, stop and think, do I really want to alter this symbol? And the answer may be yes. I'm not saying that it's always no, but I'm just saying you always want to stop and think because if you're altering a symbol, you are altering it across all the scenes, no matter what, and that may be disastrous. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, that's all I've got.